Hello, it's Kev here. Welcome to Metapod. This is Wendy. And guess what? We're this week's guests on Metapod. You're listening to Metapod, where we unpack the web's most interesting podcasts and the stories behind them. Hosted by Wendy Morrill and Kevin May. Hello. Hi. Wendy, we made it. To Christmas 2021? Well, that, yes, but of equal importance to the end of our first year of episodes of Metapod. Oh, yes, indeed we have, Kev. This time last year, we were poring over the edits of our first episode with Chris Warburton, who we'll come back to later. And I think we were getting ready to unleash our very first episode to the world. Uh, So sweet and innocent we were. But here we are, right? So big news, ladies and gents, boys and girls. We've broken our fortnightly cycle of episodes to bring you a very special one to wrap up 2021 and celebrate our first year. Oh yes, we have a very special one. Episode 37 has what some might argue our best or maybe worst guests yet. Yeah, indeed. We have searched high and low, far and wide, to secure their time. And it is, uh, insert drum roll noise here, it's us! Yes, after a bit of cajoling, I'm thrilled to say that we did agree to come on the show. Okay. Really, we just thought it would be a nice change to feature your fearless hosts in a different way on the show and also give a festive farewell to this crazy year of 2021. Yeah, that's right. We're going to discuss Metapod's first year and our funniest moments, most challenging topics, some interesting hypothetical situations, Mm. Metapod makeover and answers to a few personal questions. Yeah, and we recorded this in person in London earlier this month. Did you hear that? In person, we sat in the same room. Yeah, you know, it's quite strange really to have waited this long, but hey, you know, there've been some obvious and much needed restrictions on our ability to get together this last 12 months. But I will say, Wendy, it was a delight to be able to do this one. Yes, it was, Kevin. There's no Zoom screenshot of this in-person recording session, but that's okay because We had donuts, and yes, a very special thank you to Crosstown Donuts in London for fueling us up before this session. We love your vegan donuts, Crosstown, and we especially liked the spiced apple with miso caramel special holiday donut. So good. Yeah, I'm impressed that you remembered the name of it as well. So uh, please let us know, actually, Crosstown Donuts, when you start your first podcast, because you've got an open guest invitation (laughs) to be on our show. And obviously, if you're looking for a podcast advertising partner, uh, you can contact us in the usual way. We are your people. Yeah, we're your people. And I'm also open to launching the first Crosstown Amsterdam outpost. (laughs) But anyway, we'll post some pictures of us um, in our studio, and you'll Mm -hmm. see the intricate mic setup that was engineered for the donut-fueled in-person recording session. Yeah, (laughs) there are microphone manufacturers the world over who will marvel at how, well, actually your creativity. Possibly. Or Dallas Taylor from 20,000 Hertz, all around sound guru and our guest from episode 20 of Metapod, who might just recoil in horror. Yeah, who knows? Maybe we'll send him a picture and see what he makes of it. Okay. It was a masterpiece of engineering, I thought so, Wendy. So congratulations for your your technical prowess there. Anyway, Wendy, should we start the tape? six bean chili chat so in one of our episodes you did reveal that you have an amazing six bean chili (laughs) recipe i would like to know which metapod guest would you invite for a dinner and a chat over the six bean chili so the six bean chili chat Mm. okay so um actually one of our guests from very early on which is uh marahigra from uh, death in ice valley Okay. Which was either our second or third episode. Yeah. I just really liked her. You know, she's a journalist the same as me, as well as working on Death in Ice Valley. I imagine she's got lots of stories to tell about her trade and craft 
over many years. And we've spoken to her on email quite a lot since, and she's just generally an all-round very nice person. Do you know if she likes chilli? I have no idea if she <laughs> likes chilli. I don't know if chilli is a staple in uh, in uh, Norway, but anyway. Right, and do you think you'd make it really spicy? Or maybe she's making it. Maybe she's making it. Um, maybe we. Maybe it's both bring chilli to dinner. Oh, a chilli off. <laughs> Yes, a chili off. Can I come? <laughs> Only if you tell me who would be your dinner guest. Well, as chili. assuming that my guest would be cooking, it would be Dr. Yami. Okay. Because she had some pretty amazing yeah. recipes that okay. she shared with us. All right. And even if it's her two teenage sons that are cooking, I'm still up for it. Yes, she would sound like she was training them pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> so okay yeah. so i i did have a standby okay and that was dallas dallas taylor dallas taylor from Twenty Thousand hertz just because he's done so many episodes this is actually quite a, a serious answer but he's done so many episodes and we merely touched the surface mm. in our chat with him so i would regale him with more questions over chili so for you it's about more conversation for me it's about food <laughs> I think you've found the you found the border between us. Well done. Who sounded completely different? So my question is, who would you say sounded completely different once we were interviewing them to how they sound when they're either narrating their podcast or interviewing on their podcast? Mm, I would say Marissa Bridge of the Apology Line. And I, that's pretty simple because I think she's clearly in a narrator role in the podcast. Yeah. But speaking with her, I think we discovered how um, deeply personal Alan's story is. It's her life story. And I think you get a completely different tone that way. And how about you? Were you surprised <laughs> by Um <laughs> I'm going to say Mara Tigraf again. Okay. Uh, only because she's a narrator for, for the whole of Death in Ice Valley. Mm. Uh, there's only a few elements when she's kind of chatting with Neil, her co-host. But when we were discussing with her, she didn't have um, her kind of presenting voice on. Right. And yeah, so I was just quite surprised by that. If I can flip that the other way and say the one who sounded exactly like is Chris Warburton from our very first episode, the Ecstasy episode. I would agree with that. Just because I've been listening to him on the radio for years and years and years, and he's exactly on the radio as he is in real life when you're talking with him. He's also a very nice chap. And he's coming back. He's coming sure. back. So, yes, that will be after this episode is aired, but we're actually speaking to him and the producer of End of Days um, in a week or so, and that will be out in the new year. Yeah. A question that you wish you had asked. Okay, your next question, Wendy. A question that you wish you had asked someone that we interviewed and you maybe thought of later. Okay, so um, I have two, but the, my main one is um, Dallas Taylor again from 20,000 Hertz, just because the production and the experience of sound, I think, is going to change even more um, once we get into things such as the metaverse, which is what mm. Facebook has been talking about. I think sound is going to become more... At the moment, sound and vision are often completely separate things. So I think they're going to come together in real life metaverse -y type stuff. And we didn't get into that, mostly because metaverse hadn't been talked about when we interviewed him. But right. just that kind of three dimensional worlds and virtual worlds and things like that. What about you? I would like to ask Gene Lee of the Lazarus Heist more about what it's like to be an American with one foot abroad all the time. Well, you are such a person. What would your answer be to your own question? I find it quite difficult, and I wonder someone who has a profession in this, how they manage that. Okay. And I have a lot of questions for Danny Robbins and his <laughs> new series, Uncanny. Also, I think we'll be talking to Danny in the new year. We so. will. Yeah, Uncanny is a terrific, terrific podcast, if a little scary at times. A lot scary. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> interview that surprised you the most. The interview or podcast that surprised you the most. Todd Cochran. Our first pioneer. podcast pioneer. Yeah, why, why were you surprised? I 
was quite surprised to hear Todd's story of personal transformation going from the military into this new medium of podcasting at the mm -hmm. time. Yep. I think he's kind of an inspiring guy. Yeah, he was great, actually, and uh, introduced us to our second pioneer, which was uh, a couple of weeks later, wasn't right, it? Right, Elsie. Okay, so I would say, well, again, one of our very early ones, and that was The Cut. Okay. Um, with Avery Truffleman. And I, I think I said to you at the time that I went into that one with a preconceived idea of what the conversation was going to be like and the host was going to be like because... Uh, after li listening to a, quite a few episodes, I didn't think it was completely for me. Mm -hmm. It's aimed at New Yorkers, which I'm not, people probably 20 years younger than me. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought eventually, after listening to quite a few episodes, it was a lot better than I expected. But she was a delight. I really liked talking to her. She was really smart and pretty funny and yeah. interesting. So that was the one that surprised me the most. Topics that you'd like Metapod to unpack. A topic that you'd like us to unpack, but we haven't yet. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I've come up with lots of two for things when I'm only supposed to have one answer. Okay. So if I may, we've not done anything sport related yet, but mm. I actually think that's a really difficult one because, you know, I, I really like football, soccer, but I can't think of how we would tackle or unpack or get the origin story on a football podcast, for example. So I think we need to think about that one a little bit more. And um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Wendy and I do come from the travel industry as such. We work in the travel industry. I write about it. And at some point, we should probably do a travel-related podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so, But <laughs> the question is, who would we interview? Because there are so many of them. And how would we tackle it? So That's a tricky one. I have two as well. Um, more science, specifically astronomy. Okay. And more human interest on the social science side. And I th suspect that something Josh Baker is doing soon will be yep. interesting. Yep. And um, would be great to hear more about the Middle East and Asia yep. in that respect. Okay, good. Most challenging topic. Okay, Wendy, so uh, the most challenging topic that we've tackled. Anything that appears in a Nick Hilton podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Is that and challenging in a good way? Yes, yeah, it's very good. Um, okay. A lot of stuff around the internet, communications, self-identity, and also institutional mediation or regulation of these things. I think Nick does a great job in bringing those up mm -hmm. um, in his work. Okay. What about you? Most challenging topic? Okay, so um, the most challenging one for me was possibly the Mark Thomas one we did, um, mm. just because we recorded that in November or early December of last year, just as everything in the pandemic was going to shit again. Mm, November 2020. Yeah. And the, the, the majority of this podcast was talking about that first lockdown in the UK, and it was obvious that a second one was coming just before Christmas. And I, th I just found having to talk about it again and knowing that it was all going to happen again a little bit kind of well, challenging. Yeah, uh, it was a heavy podcast to listen to at the moment Yeah, um, as well. Yeah, yeah, it was of a time and a place. It was challenging, but it was interesting. And I've admired Mark Thomas for a long time. So it was nice to actually talk to him. Most enjoyable topic. Uh, the Lazarus heist. Okay. Just because I learned so much. And I know I've learned a lot from some of the kind of more science ones, like 20,000 Hertz, but certainly that one was a history lesson in career and cybercrime. Yeah. Two things that I knew very little about until we spoke to Jean and Jeff, our wonderful guests. Yeah. I'm going to say Battersea Poltergeist <laughs> because I was totally enthralled with it yeah. at the time and it was totally an escape that I loved. And... I've got a second one here, Apology Line, because I really liked meeting Marissa and yeah. learning about her experience moving to New York City as a young 20-something, so... Yep, okay. The funniest moments. How about the funniest moment so far? Maybe it wasn't funny, but it was just bizarre, which then gave me the giggles. <laughs> and that was when we interviewed Selena Kopic of Two Week Minimum. 
and normally it's all the focus is on the guest and then we got into this conversation about homemade candles and I scurried off mid-interview to get a candle <laughs> and showed her on air while we were interviewing her this candle I'd made also, I appreciate that, Wendy, you're burning a candle right now, as am I. Kevin, are you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, hooray. Oh, that's a nice one. I wish I could tell what brand it is. But what, <laughs> no idea what, what scent it is. <laughs> Wendy, over to you. That's funny because Kevin is a candle maker himself. <gasps> what? And I think that he might so excited. be able to talk a little bit about hemp wicks. <laughs> Oh my gosh, Kevin, take it away. I can't believe you guys buried the lead on this. You're a candle maker. I love it. Not by profession. I'm just a journalist normally, but uh, in my <laughs> spare time during the pandemic, I learned how to make candles. Yeah. How do you feel about patchouli? Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, man. And yeah, so I tend to associate patchouli with incense and just like, I don't dig it. I suppose now would be the time to say that this one that I made that I showed you earlier has got patchouli in it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> See, this is what happens when you have too many hot takes. You get burned. Oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she seemed genuinely delighted. <laughs> and it was, I was like, hang on a second, I think we're supposed to be interviewing you. We not do that in every episode. <laughs> should, yeah, a candle break. <laughs> Until we sell some ads, we'll just do a candle break. <laughs> what about you? That, well, that was fun, and we have a photo of we that do. moment, yeah. actually. <laughs> we'll post that on, this, on the story that accompanies this episode. What's your funniest moment, Wendy? Talking to Dan and Greg of Smart Enough to Know Better. Yeah. And the okay, yeah. just the simple misunderstandings that <laughs> I had because of our accents. <laughs> All right, last one. We are made of star stuff. Say again. We are made of star stuff. Oh no, it's Carl Sagan. Oh. Carl Sagan? Sagan, not say again. <laughs> no, no, no. Brilliant. Sagan. Sorry, it's my it's my terrible Australian accent there. Sorry about that. Love. In my horrible <laughs> American <laughs> one. <laughs> that was just a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. And it was crazy trying to line up the time zones with them because they were one was in Eastern Australia, one was in Western Australia, and right. we were in Europe. So thank you to Greg and Dan. Best virtual or real background. Okay, Wendy, um, we do all our interviews on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And we've initially, when we started this, we had a, a, a reasonably lengthy discussion about whether we were going to do video versions. You and did. Yes. I, okay, so I said we should do a video version. And, um, and I said, what? Yeah, and you quickly talked me down just by saying one word like that so but anyway we do record anyway the point i'm making is we do record these on zoom and we can see all but one i think of our interviewees mostly yeah, yeah. and some of them have very good backgrounds mm -hmm. whether they're virtual or real so who would you say has got your favorite virtual or real zoom background oh, i have a couple for this one okay <laughs> Gene and Jeff of the Lazarus Heist, they had great branding, essentially, as their yeah. Zoom backgrounds, yeah. which was the podcast artwork. Uh, Simon from Soda Jerker has some really nice guitars. <laughs> um, yes, that's true. <laughs> and, you know, we cannot forget Danny Robbins' shed. <laughs> And where he seemingly records all of his podcast content is right. in the shed. Yeah, right. And then we did see many closets this year. Yes, we did. <laughs> so Dan Maudsley, Tara Boyle, Eric Menel, very nice closets, guys. Yeah, well done. Closet champions. Brilliant. <laughs> How about you? Um, I, I would just extend what you said about the Lazarus heist. We, we have posted mm -hmm. a picture of here and that was Jean when she was interrupted by her little dog and she held the dog up. To and dance. To, to, to do a little <laughs> dance for us. So that would be my, that would be my uh, selection for that one. Most wanted guest. Most wanted guest. Most wanted guest. For next year. Uh, Harishikesh Hirwe. So I've been a big fan of his uh, since Song Exploder, mm -hmm. especially the West Wing Weekly, which is the one I mm -hmm. would really like to chat with him about on metapod but he's also done a few other things since home cooking yeah. and partners and he's just a brilliant presenter of those shows and it sounds like a very interesting guy his co-host 
Josh Molina on mm -hmm. the West Wing Weekly also sounds terrific fun. So if we could get both of them, that would be great. But otherwise, Rishi would be wonderful. Okay. And you? 2022 goals. Yep. Patrick Radden Keefe of Wind of Change. Mm -hmm. He's written a book this year, so maybe we'll try again. Okay. And also for our Podcast Pioneers episode, Adam Curry. Yep. A live episode of Metapod. So let's say that we're doing a live episode mm -hmm. anywhere. Where is it and who's there, Kevin? The live episode one, it would be at a festival with an audience okay. in like a marquee or something like that. And our guests would be Soda Jerker or Tape Notes, who we're interviewing very soon for a forthcoming episode. Watch out for that. Mm -hmm. um, just because they know so many of the artists and they could probably bring the artists along to be interviewed as well. Who would you have? Where would you have it? Would I be invited as well? Oh, you'd totally be invited because I think you want this too. Okay. Dr. Kevin Fong yes. at either Cape Canaveral mm -hmm. or Houston. Yeah, so Dr. Kevin Fong, for those that aren't aware, is the uh, presenter or the host of 13 Minutes to the Moon. Mm -hmm. He's also a doctor and we've been trying to get him on the show for quite some time. We have. Metapod commissions a new voiceover and theme tune. Okay, Wendy, so Metapod needs a new theme tune. Okay. Who do we commission? And part B of the question is Metapod needs a new intro voiceover. We're very grateful and we love Zoe, but for one episode only, we get a new voiceover. Who is it going to be? New voiceover, Nick Hilton. Okay. New theme tune. Nick Hilton? <laughs> He's very talented, isn't he? He is. is it, it'll be just coconuts. Yes. <laughs> this is a weird one because I, I could probably think of a lot, but I'm going to go with Mary Lattimore, the harp player. Okay. Okay, right. This could be very different to mine. Maybe if we mix the two. Right. So mine was Nine Inch Nails. Oh. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, give a bit of a harder edge to our intro. Industrial you know? harp. Industrial, <laughs> industrial harp. It's the next wow. big thing. Yeah, come listen, hipsters. Only industrial on Metapod. Harp. Only on Metapod. Okay, so I went for Nine Inch Nails to, to produce and write the new song. And my voiceover would be uh, either Patrick Stewart, who's the uh, British actor, Captain Picard from Star Trek and lots okay. of other... Shakespeare type things as well but I yeah so him or Charlotte Gainsborough the French actress oh oh so, oh yeah, yeah exactly Metapod becomes a Netflix series so Kev mm -hmm. things are getting really good for us next year oh inevitably yes Metapod becomes a hot Netflix series yeah a bit like uh, Song Exploder has right yeah who plays us? <laughs> okay, um, so uh, Mr. Bean for me, <laughs> and Charlotte Gainsborough for you. Hmm. <laughs> I don't speak a lick of French. It doesn't matter. You're being replaced. Oh. <laughs> okay. Okay. Who? Right. Who, who are your actors? Julian Anderson and Moby. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gillian Anderson, I can fully endorse. Uh, Moby, of course you can. Moby for his, um, his excellent work raising the profile of veganism. Maybe not for some of the other things. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think of it that way. Okay. <laughs> All right. That was really nice of us to spend some time with us on Metapod, wasn't it? Yes, our hearty thanks from us to <laughs> us for coming on the show. I must say, I'm curious about Nine Inch Nails meets Mary Lattimore 
industrial harp version of the Metapod theme tune that we know and love so well. Me too. And if Trent isn't available, maybe Nick Hilton <laughs> can play the coconuts for us. <laughs> I, I, I'm sure he can. He's an extremely <laughs> talented young man. Though. So do you think we've intrigued or scared off future guests with the Metapod 6 being chilly off? Uh, so, sorry, what was that? I was too busy answering messages from the <laughs> agents of some of the best known podcast oh. celebrities on the planet. Oh, I see. So we're already booked out through 2030 for Metapod 6 being chilly chats. Yeah. Wow, I'm so impressed, Kev. You should be. All right. Well, back to normality for a moment. Only a moment, I promise. Um, as always, you can find more info about Metapod, its guests and hosts, that would be us, uh-huh. at metapodshow.com. We're also on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube if you fancy being social with us. Yes, come and be sociable with us. Right. So although this is the last episode of 2021, our first full year, if you hadn't realized by getting to the end of this particular episode, we have more episodes lined up for 2022, starting with Chris Warburton and Kieran Tracy talking about their podcast, End of Days. Uh, the podcast revisits the siege of the Branch Davidians complex near Waco, Texas, which took place in 1993. And David Koresh, the leader of the Branch Davidians. So what's unique about this perspective on the event is the focus on the Branch Davidians that came from the UK. End of Days was a BBC production that came out in 2018. Chris, as many of you know, is a BBC Radio 5 Live radio personality here in the UK. Kieran also works for the BBC. The two have a good chemistry, which you'll hear. They worked together on End of Days, as well as the more recent podcast, Ecstasy, the Battle of Rave. That looks at the rise of rave culture in the UK, and we talked to Chris about that for the very first Metapod episode, which came out in January 2021. So we're really thrilled to have him back this time with Kieran. Yep. And there's more coming, all of which you can find on the coming soon section of metapodshow.com. Thank you so much for listening to Metapod this year. It's been a fantastic first year. Thank you. And a very fun one doing the show. So thank you to all of our guests, as well as Zoe and Alex, who help us behind the scenes occasionally. Thank you. Yes, thank you to them too. Okay, that's right. So we'll see you next time. That's it for Metapod this time. Thanks for listening. Metapod will be back soon with another unpacking of the web's most interesting podcasts. But in the meantime, make sure to subscribe at any of the usual places you find your other favourite podcasts. We'd hate for you to miss upcoming episodes, and we'd love it if you left us a review. You can let us know what you think of this episode by going to metapodshow.com. We'll see you next time. Metapod is produced by Wendy Morrill and Kevin May.